Hey guys, welcome back. This will hopefully be my first video fishing Cabo. You know, I was out here fishing yesterday. We got here yesterday and I didn't have much luck. You know, I was out here in the morning. I was out here midday. I was out here in the evening, but I don't think the big fish were around. So today I'm out here midday. You know, I just want to see if there's fish out here and see if I can do well with them. But you know, you never know when they're around. If the fish are around, the bite so any time of the day that you have a chance to go fishing take it i'm super excited to fish today i'm gonna be doing fishing like i haven't quite done before so this is surf fishing but it's a very heavy setup so you can see i got a pretty huge rod with me today this is uh by century rods it's the slingshot it's 12 foot six and i got it paired with my daiwa saltist 6500 this thing is mag sealed so it's super nice and i have this reel spooled up i got mono then i got 50 pound braid and then about the last 350 meters are 30 pound braid so that's gonna allow me to get some really 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 nice cast today i'm gonna try to catch my fish on top water so i got this lure here it's called the cabo killer and it's a pretty popular lure for this area hence the name but i'm really excited to try it out it's in the two and one quarter ounce weight so i got it down a jansen tackle right here in baja so I'm super, super excited to try it out. Let's see how it does. You know, there's no one, no one on the beach. And the reason why is because the waves are just absolutely ginormous. So what happens, and it's actually part of the reason why this place has such good fishing, is basically out there, that's just a cliff. You can see there's no waves breaking. The only waves breaking are happening right on shore. And those are called plunging breakers. But further out, there's not a single wave. So that means there's no sandbars. It's basically right here just cliff and it's a drop off so that's why this place can have so many big surf species and that's why it's kind of a mecca of surf fishing because you're literally cliff fishing but you don't even know it however that does come with some risks you know the, the waves are huge and the wash is absolutely tremendous so you you can get pulled back just look at the waves behind me and you can even tell by how slanted the beach is that it's just a cliff so look at that. All right, let's try it out. Cabo killer in the two and a quarter ounce, baby. Let's see it. Look at that size of that wave. I'm gonna back up a little and I'm just gonna cast it as far, as far as I can. Let's see. Ugh. This is a really fast action top water lure. So you know, you know if you're swimming it right, if it's just skipping across the surface and I can see it. I can literally see it just jumping right there on the first wave. So it's swimming right, it'll be rolling around there. And if any fish sees it from underneath, it's really gonna look like a freaked out bait fish. So hopefully it'll hit. We got those nice sharp trebles in the back and you know, these things look pretty deadly. Look at the size of that wave, absolute behemoth. I'm gonna scoot back just so I don't get slammed. But you know, that's why you gotta get your cast far too because you gotta stand pretty far from the beach. You see the waves are so big. These are big, big plunging breakers. And that's why, you know, there's no people swimming this beach. And that's why I love it. And as always, you know, I'm casting, I'm walking down the beach, I'm not staying in one place. I wanna cover as much water, as much ground, as possible look at the size of that wave jeez and that will really maximize my chances of catching anything if they're out here this is but it's jumping so i'm gonna keep my rod tip down my rod tip down is gonna prevent this fish from jumping in the air because every single time this fish jumps you know it's it's gonna wiggle that hook it's gonna make the hole in his mouth a little bigger and you know it's just more likely to get off i've been fishing for a while now haven't been having any luck finally the first bite on that top water cabo killer and we're on our first fish of the day Let's go. Looks like it's a needlefish. I'm just gonna help 
I'm gonna let the waves help bring it in. Let's see, let's see it. There we are. Nice. Here, gotta get him away from these waves because they're pretty big. Woo! There we go. First fish. And this is a big needlefish. This is so awesome. Huge, huge needlefish. I'm gonna get the hook off this guy. I'll show him to you. But what a fun catch. What a cool first catch. What a way to start this trip. Needlefish, top water, Cabo killer from the beach, baby. Let's get back to it. The waves are huge here. The wash comes up really high. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this needlefish. I'm just gonna be careful picking him up because this fish will turn around and try to bite you. So I've just picked it up behind the head. You can see how big it is. Kind of a monster needlefish. By far the biggest needlefish I've caught in my life. I've caught some before, also in Mexico, but much, much smaller. And these guys will fray your leader because you can see they have those big, gnarly blue teeth. So after this, I might change my leader this, uh, depending on what it's like, but this is an awesome, awesome catch, which I do want to get released. So let's go. So first fish of the day, beautiful, beautiful needlefish. Just got to be careful because these guys do have mega gnarly teeth. Let's get this hook out. There we go. Easy, easy unhooking. And you can see the size, beauty, and strength of these needlefish. Look at that, look at that mouth. Absolute unit of a needlefish, you know? These guys don't put up the biggest fight just because of their shape. Uh, and they're, they're not super heavy, but they are long and they are very, very, very acrobatic uh, fighters. So you can see when I hooked them, the second I hooked them, I saw this guy fly out of the water, you know, in the, the entire fight, you know, I was just praying that he wouldn't get off. But beautiful needlefish. And you can see it's got beautiful colors and even his teeth are actually a really, really, really nice blue color. So these guys will be here traversing the beach and they are prey for a lot of fish when they're smaller. But ones this big, we'll go for lures, we'll go for other big fish. And this guy I caught on top water. So really, really nice fish. Let's get it released. I'm not gonna get a measurement on this guy. I just wanna get him released. But, you know, such an exciting way to start this trip. What a beautiful fish. Let's see, let's quickly get him back into the water head first and he's off there we go quick release we're back let's go back to fishing all right so you can see right here look at that my leader is kind of frayed and that's just because these needlefish have some big gnarly teeth as you were able to see so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to switch out my leader how i tie this leader is i actually use an fg knot so i used to use albright knots uh, because that really works well and it's very very easy and quick in the surf in NorCal but out here I do want a heavier more resistant knot you know the FG knot might take a whole minute but it's really really strong once you learn how to do it well it's just unstoppable and for my leader since out here I know there's big toothy fish I am using 50 pound fluorocarbon so that was crucial if I hadn't been using that you know I could have lost that fish you can see a clear nick in the line right there and even though that doesn't look like much you know it is literally true that a chain is only as strong as its weakest link so same applies same applies when it comes to a line or any other sort of thing like that but absolutely exhilarating first catch there might be some more you know sometimes they travel in schools i'm gonna keep casting out here see if i can hit another and yeah what a start get back in there beautiful beautiful first fish look at this i'm gonna explain exactly what i'm doing to cast this thing so for this you know i'm giving it a bit of line i'm letting my lure just kind of trail behind me right like that when i cast so it's actually just sitting on the sand i'm gonna whip it over my shoulder and straight out as hard as i can i want to get this cast really really far out there let's do it yeah that'll do it beautiful so that hits and the second it hits i'm quickly reeling and this Cabo Killer is a topwater lure. It's just floating, it's gonna float right on the surface. It's just skipping on the surface. And with fish in this area, you know, you can't reel too fast. That's what I've been told. Uh, <laughs> basically, the faster you reel, the more attention you're gonna draw to the lure. So it's actually better. And the slower you reel, they can distinguish a lure from a fish. And they just won't be nearly as enticed. There we go. 
so it's really important to just swim in as fast as you can and i'm just watching this skip on top of the water which is exactly the action it's supposed to be making and is exactly what provoked that beautiful bite but i'm fishing right now you know and i'm not fishing at the prime times you know the prime times really really morning and evening sunrise and sunset but it's about midday i decided to just give it a couple of casts and got hit so just keep plugging a lot of times one hit means more hits this i'm walking up to this kind of rocky outcrop right here maybe i can cast from up here looks looks kind of nice and you know i said earlier it's about to be mahi season and one of the ways one of the most effective ways to catch mahi is actually you see that red buoy out there mahi love stuff like that you know out in the open ocean you can have you can you can find a tree trunk and under it there'll be bait fish and the mahi will be hunting them so i'm gonna have a cast see if i can hit it there see if we can hook up nice that's right by the buoy right by the buoy so you know just stuff like that is really little really really little hints you can have that can make the complete difference in your fishing trip you know i could be fishing down the beach there could be mahis on these buoys and I just never catch them because they're congregated here. And if I'd known they were congregated around a little bit of structure, I could have caught them. So yeah, it's important to come into these situations knowing the species. So that's right by that buoy again. Give that quick retrieve. No luck by the buoy. Uh, they're doing construction there, so I got kicked out. But you know, a lot of times those things do hold some fish. So always give it a try. I only had two casts there. But maybe if I had more, I would hooked up. That's okay. I'll be there tomorrow before the construction. So. I don't know if you can see, but right now, right by those two ships, big humpback whale. Pretty sure it's the season right now, and it's not, it's not even that far off the beach. That's just how deep it is out here. Guys, the wind has picked up just way too much. You know, I'm sure you can hear it. It's making it so that I have to stand way, way, way back on the beach to cast. Like right now, look at this. Look at this. Look where the water just got me. I'm literally, I'm pretty far from the beach. And it's just, I can't get it out as far as I would like to. So I think I'm gonna try again tonight. But for today, you know, that was a really, really nice session got that nice monster needlefish bigger than any needlefish i've ever caught before so that's pretty exciting for me but guys if you like this video please be sure to like comment subscribe you know let me know what you want to see i'm out here i'm fishing i want to get creative so give me some suggestions i'll try to do them anyways hope you enjoyed this video until next time tight lines